Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us talk about enoxaparin. What is this drug enoxaparin? The suffix parin indicates that this drug belongs to the category of heparins, which is one of the natural anticoagulant. So enoxaparin is a low molecular weight heparin and it acts as anticoagulant, thereby it can reduce the clotting. But this drug is having the low molecular weight. So this is the chain with high molecular weight and this is nothing but the heparin because of high molecular weight. Heparin can produce few of the specific side effects such as osteoporosis and heparin induced thrombocytopenia which are somewhat less observed in low molecular weight heparins. So this is a short chain indicating low molecular weight heparin which are having a less risk of osteoporosis as well as the dose of the drug can be easily fixed as they follow first order kinetics. So enoxaparin is one of the low molecular weight heparin which is more preferred than natural heparin. And being low molecular weight, this enoxaparin inhibits mainly the activity of factor 10A but it is having very little activity on the factor 2A. The factor 2A is also called as thrombin which is involved in the final steps of clotting pathway but factor 10A is the common for both extrinsic as well as intrinsic pathways. So activation of factor 10A is inhibited by low molecular weight heparin such as enoxaparin. And this can be used in the treatment of deep vein thrombosis which is associated with increased clotting resulting in the increased thrombotic events. And if it is untreated, DVT can be converted into another complication pulmonary embolism. In this condition, we can observe the increased clotting within the pulmonary blood vessels which reduce the pulmonary circulation leading to life-threatening effects. So in these two conditions, enoxaparin can be used as anticoagulant to reduce the clotting process. But at the same time, this drug can also be used as prophylactic in those conditions which are associated with thrombotic events. So enoxaparin can be used as prophylactic in few other surgeries such as hip replacement, knee replacement which may involve with increased risk of thrombotic events such as increased DVT and pulmonary embolism. Again in such conditions enoxaparin can be given as prophylactic in order to reduce the attacks of DVT and pulmonary embolism. Similarly this can also be used as prophylactic in cardiovascular disorders such as unstable angina and non-Q wave myocardial infarction. Again, both of these conditions are associated with elevated risk of thromboembolism. So in order to reduce these thrombotic events, anticoagulants can be given. So enoxaparin can be used as prophylactic in these conditions. And this drug is also indicated for treatment of acute STEMI, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. In such conditions, enoxaparin can reduce the risk of clotting. So it can be used for the treatment of STEMI along with other drugs which reduce the clotting process. So today in this video we are going to see how this enoxaparin acts, what are the important precautions, side effects, doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. Now let us see how this drug acts. As we have discussed enoxaparin mainly act on the clotting factors. But in order to act on clotting factors, one of the target for enoxaparin is the antithrombin 3. Being a low molecular weight heparin, this can bind to this antithrombin 3 such that it can increase its activity. Now factor 10A can bind to this antithrombin 3 where it is going to be inhibited. In this way, enoxaparin can inhibit the activity of factor 10A. Then what is the action of this enoxaparin on factor 2A? So this drug can bind to this antithrombin 3 where it stimulates the activity of antithrombin 3. Then this complex should bind to the factor 2E. Now factor 2E can bind to this complex but it is not sufficient for complete inhibition. In order to inhibit the activity of factor 2E, an extra chain is required. So heparin should have a long chain because this chain can bind to both antithrombin 3 as well as factor 2E. Now since enoxaparin is not having this long chain, it cannot bind to the factor 2A, so it cannot show significant activity on factor 2A. That's why 
Enoxaparin mainly inhibits the acuta of factor 10a which results in the decreased clotting process. Now let us see the precautions of enoxaparin. One of the important precautions of enoxaparin is that being an anticoagulant, this drug can increase the risk of hemorrhage. So particularly it can increase the hemorrhage within the CNS resulting in the hemorrhagic stroke within the patients. So this is a very serious complication. So the patients who are having the risk of any hemorrhagic conditions, enoxaparin should be carefully given. And even it can increase the risk of bleeding in the ulcerative GI disorders. So in such conditions, this drug should be carefully given. Similarly, this drug can also increase the hemorrhage in the patients with any renal dysfunction. The patients with diabetic retinopathy where hemorrhage can be further increased. And patients with arterial hypertension, again the risk of hemorrhage is more pronounced with use of enoxaparin. Similarly, this drug can produce some thrombocytopenia. Even it is not more pronounced such as heparin. But still, enoxaparin can reduce the platelet count. And when this platelet count is reduced by less than 1 lakh, in such conditions, enoxaparin should not be used. What are the side effects? The important side effects, as we have already discussed, is the hemorrhage. So that's why this drug should be carefully given in the patients who are having increased risk of hemorrhage or recent surgeries, where the risk of hemorrhagic stroke may be enhanced by the use of enoxaparin. Similarly, this drug can also produce some local reactions. So it can produce local irritation, local pain at the site of injection. Even it can produce hematoma, echimosis, pooling of the blood under the skin and erythema. This drug can also produce other side effects such as peripheral edema, some diarrhea, nausea, dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. And it can also reduce the platelet count resulting in thrombocytopenia. Finally, this drug can also produce some hyperkalemia which further increase the complications within the patients. So when this enoxaparin is used, potassium level should be monitored. And this drug can also increase liver enzymes such as ALT as well as AST. How it is given? This drug is available as injection which is given by subcutaneous route. And the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication. During the surgeries, enoxaparin can be given as prophylactic at a dose variable from 30 to 40 mg given once daily which is given by subcutaneous route. For the treatment of DVT and pulmonary embolism, this drug is given at a dose of 1 mg per kg of body weight given for every 12 hours. Otherwise, it can be given as 1.5 mg per kg of body weight given as once daily. So that's about this drug enoxaparin which is a low molecular weight heparin which is indicated for the treatment of DVT and pulmonary embolism. It can also be used in those conditions which are associated with thrombotic events such as during the surgeries, in the patients with unstable angina, non-QA myocardial infarction where enoxaparin can be used as prophylactic. This drug is also indicated for the treatment of acute STEMI where it reduces the clotting but hemorrhage is one of the important side effects that is produced by this drug. And this drug is given by subcutaneous route, which produce some local reactions at the site of injection. So that's about this drug, enoxaparin. That's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.